Hey guys, Farak here. Okay, now we're gonna do Frost Tier One now. Now Frost Tier One is awesome. I mean, if you can afford the deck slot for Winter Tide, you have some amazing offensive potential, and you can destroy any Tier One. It involves a lot of power, but if you can pull it off, it's incredible. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First, we'll go through all the cards, and then I'll speak about how you can pull it all together. Ice Guardian, I already showed you in a different video. He's got pretty weak health, pretty decent medium attack, but when you have him near a friendly building and you activate his ability, or if you spawn him near a well or a power or, a, or an orb, he comes with the shield, which gives him altogether over 1,000 health, which is amazing. Master Archers are not the best shooters in the game, but they're very, very good. They have good health. They're small counters, so they're great pretty much versus anything. And when you combine them with Frost Mage, which knocks back any small, small counters that the enemy tries making, like Thugs can't do anything to them, or Wind Weavers are useless versus them, once you have the Frost Mage here. So this is a very good combination. Of course, Frost Mage, <coughs> she does that splash attack, and small units are useless because it knocks them back. So even in tier 2, it's kind of useful to use Frost Mage. It's only 60 power. Here's where the fun begins. If you are Frost and you use Frost Sorceress properly, you have a tremendous advantage versus the enemy. For only 20 power, you get a 660 health shield, which lasts for a half a minute. That gives you some crazy offensive potential. For example, if you're playing a deck versus a deck that doesn't have knockback, and you can get Imperials and put them in defensive stance, so they take, what is it, 60% less damage? Or Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. And they have 840 health as it is, which is insane. So now we're talking about close to 1,500 health in Tier 1. And then you use for 20 power Frost Sorceress, and you dump a shield on top, we're talking about 2,000 hit points, more than 2,000 hit points in Tier 1. It'll get down a well, no question. And the enemy just can't counter it. It's amazing. So a Frost Sorceress is absolutely incredible. I don't know why I don't see more Frost players using it. Think of it as a moving shaman, but with even better potential. Now, uh, she does have pretty awful attack, and she's really a, uh, what's it called, unit? a supportive unit. But in Tier 2 as well, I mean, it, <clears throat> if you play Frost Fire, which is a pretty cool deck, by the way, or you're playing in a 2 versus 2 match, and your teammate has a Skyfire Drake. Now, what's the weakness of Skyfire Drake? The weakness is that it only has 450 health. But for only 20 power, you bring this thing over 1,000 health, it's basically the same thing as a Swamp Drake now. That's incredible in Tier 2. And the enemy just, it can't be countered, period. Amazing. Like any units that use this on Sky Fiends, anything, you practically double their health, and it becomes incredibly strong. So if you play Frost Tier 1, I recommend you start using Frost Sorceress and try to learn how to micro her shields. Very, very cool. Now some players, instead of her, try to get an offensive Ice Shield Tower out, and also for 20 tower make shields. But it's stationary. And can't move, so... I mean, I, I happen to think it's a really, really strong tower. Mine's not upgraded. It's really strong, but she's better. She's just amazing to bring with an army. Then you have Lightblade. Now, people think of Lightblade as a large counter. For 20 power, you have the large unit attack, and it does less damage, and Lightblade will kill it. Great. Or the Lightblade does more damage. What do I have? Yeah. It deals 50% more less damage. So the Lightblade will kill it. But the light blade is so much more than that. Let me show you. So you're Frost Tier 2, and the enemy fire rushes Tier 3. Oh no, you're in massive trouble, and the enemy is coming at you with a Juggernaut. Run for your lives! And the Juggernaut is going towards your well, and is about to raffle stomp your well. Not anymore. Use the light blade ability. By the way, Frost Sorceress would be a great thing to have but right now. Now, because it's medium... It gets knocked back. Now the Juggernaut is forced to attack it. It's going to take a whole while chasing after it, blah, 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 blah. You realize how long this is in real game time? This is a crazy amount of time. And if you still need some more time, okay. 
target is immune. I guess it gets immunity. Oh, for a little bit. And then it goes back to the well, and there you go again. And now it's going to start knocking this guy around. So it, that Juggernaut is completely immobilized. And by this time, you know, if you're Tier 2, you can make Lyrish Knights or whatever. So most players in Tier 2 are completely dead to Juggernaut, but this is amazing. Now, he, might, he probably can disenchant it, but it's a 20 power spell, and he's disenchanting it for, what, 80 power? So it's a pretty incredible ability, Lightblade's ability, and you can use it for anything. My personal favorite is not that. My personal favorite is... Where are they? Blah, blah. There we go. Shadow Phoenixes. So the Shadow Phoenix sees that you have three wells next to each other and a bunch of units, and he's going to have a great time. So the Shadow Phoenix goes in for the dive, and he's running. You pull out a light blade, use the ability, and then run away. Watch this. Now the Phoenix has to follow you. It's going to follow you to the middle of nowhere where you have no units. It's going to dive and only take away half your health. What a waste of a thou of 100 power, right? Light blade is amazing. In my opinion, it's the strongest of all L counters because it... it it immobilizes just so many enemy units. It's a great ability. Like Firesworn, it's great that it has knockback, but it can only get large units with its ability. This is amazing. I really love Light Blade. Okay, we have Ice Barrier, which for only 20 power, you can put it near wells or orbs and build them up later. It's also great in combination with Home Soil because it makes all the armies around it do now 50% more damage since it's been nerfed, and it only goes for 20 seconds. So... It got nerfed. I don't think it deserved it, but you have Frostbite, which slows down the enemy. By the way, a pretty amazing combination with Lightblade. So, for example, the enemy has a Reaver. You're still Tier 1. He's coming at your base. You can use the Lightblade, which makes the enemy do less damage, right? Oh, whoops. <laughs> He's a friendly unit I'm spacing out. I'm sorry. So, here we go. So, the enemy Reaver is coming at us, and you're still Tier 1 because you were brave and took a well. So, you pull out your Lightblade. Now he's going to do 50% less damage, and he walks slower now. So you could do this, in which case the Reaver is even going to die to the Light Blade. Or you can make him chase you, and he's slowed down by Frostbite now, so he's not going to get anywhere. They're just... Frost T1 is incredible. Now it takes a ton of slots to pull this together. Okay. Glacier Shell, obviously, for healing... Uh, not healing, but protecting your wells and orbs... Very nice spell, but for 50 power, it's not actually accomplishing anything, so only use it when you absolutely must. Glyph of Frost. Now, I don't think you should have this in your deck. I'll tell you why. Sorry. Essentially, it's like mine. It does that crowd control only if the enemy steps on it. So first of all, for 50 power, you're taking the risk of the enemy seeing it and moving away, which with swift units, it's very easy to dodge. Secondly, if it lands, the units take 50% less damage. And thirdly, once you go tier 2, it's obsolete because you have Cold Snap. So you're not going to use it, really. I've seen some players do it successfully even in tier 2 and tier 3, but it doesn't happen often. So I don't recommend using Glyph of Frost. Even for scavenger rushes or when the enemy charges you, still, Glyph of Frost really doesn't help very much. Now, I mean, I thought it was essential. Moran V doesn't even use it versus Scavy Rushes, and he does very well. Okay, Wintertide, the controversial card. Now, this card is overpowered, but no one has it in their deck. So you might wonder, you know, what's going on? If it's so overpowered, how come no one uses it? And the reason is simply deck slots. I mean, look at this. Most players won't have Imperials, even though I think they're amazing, won't have Ice Shield Tower, and won't have Glyph of Frost. Whether they have Sorceress or not, I personally think they should. But already, look at this. This is a tremendous Tier 1. Look at that. That's already half of your deck, practically. Affording another card means you're limited to Tier 2, period. You can't go Tier 3. It's, like, impossible. So a lot of players don't like it. But let me show you the power of Wintertide. If you can get yourself, you know, a Frost Mage, and mainly Master Archers, that's all that really matters. Now, they can't be knocked back when Wintertide is happening. And they take 30% less damage. And they deal 250 damage when they're being trampled. So something like a Dread Charger, which would normally knock them back trampling, 
not only doesn't knock them back, but will take 250 trampling them, which is pretty cool. So basically, when you have an even a pretty powerful enemy army coming at you, if you get an ice barrier up, winter tides you take less damage, home soil so you deal more damage, the enemy's finished. Look at all my, look at this, look what's going on here. One of my units is in trouble, everything else is just destroying the enemy, and these are all tier 2 units. So, my tier 1 army is destroying this tier 2 army. That's pretty crazy. It's just a really, really powerful spell. And on top of it, if you can get your whole Frost Army, you have your Ice Guardians and your one Light Blade and your two Master Archers, and you get to an enemy base and manage to drop this guy and do a home soil, and then when they try making counterattacks, you cast, you know, home soil, Winter Tide, so they can't be Hurricaned or Frost, then the enemy's finished. It's just an incredibly powerful combination. And, uh, you know what? Fool around with it. See if you can make a deck slot for it. But once again, I understand if you don't have room for it. But I super encourage you putting Frost Sorceress in your deck because she's just amazing. Even in uh, Tier 2 and even Tier 3. Just an incredible card to have around. Um, I've been using it a lot on a different account with uh, in 2v2 and even 3v3. Running her around even with my uh, tier 3 units and just giving them shields and the potential is amazing alright guys I think next the demand for these tier 1 things were so high I think I might start doing tier 2 where I just do you know shadow frost or nature fire and just show you all the possible combinations you can do alright so until then see ya